Hey guys, this is Steve with Tronics Fix again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Xbox One. It's the uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare Edition. Uh, this one we bought from a salvage auction and um, it doesn't read discs when we put them in. Other than that, everything seems to work perfectly. So um, I'm suspecting it's a bad laser, so we're going to go ahead and uh, replace that, see if that fixes it. I think it should, hopefully it will and um, then we'll uh, resell it. So what we're gonna need today is, I'm using electric screwdrivers. You need a Phillips, um, this is a uh, PH1. And then you're also gonna need two uh, different Torx bits or screwdrivers. We've got a T8 security Torx and a T10 security Torx. So you're gonna need both of those to do this repair. You're also gonna need um, a pair of pliers. That's what we use anyways. Um, I've also got this uh, PH00 Phillips screwdriver and then just a small uh, flat blade screwdriver. So um, those are the tools we use. Hopefully I'm not forgetting anything. If I am, you'll see uh, what I uh, forgot when we start tearing it down. So let's go ahead and get this torn down and get that laser replaced. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we gotta take this panel off right here. So to do that, I use a flat blade screwdriver. Um, if you haven't done it before, you may want to use something soft like a plastic pry tool or opening tool um, because you do have to be careful not to mar up the plastic. Um, at least I do. I don't like marring it up. Some people don't care. So um, you just pry up there and then this is just held in by clips that actually aren't even very strong. And then um, that removes that. Then we got to take slide this piece off. So what I do is use my flat blade screwdriver, put it inside one of the holes and then just push it back and that piece comes off. Um, and then what we gotta do is, um, this is all held in place by clips. So there's a clip here, 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 and here. And then there's some clips on the side. Um, we're gonna go ahead and pull off this warranty sticker. Obviously, if your console is under warranty, then you'll want to just send it in for repair. So, in order to get the clips off, what we wanna do is push in and pull up right there. I think you can see that open. So after that, um, I actually have a plastic opening tool and this is in one of the cases that I forgot to mention that on the intro. So we're gonna try and push with our fingers. I don't think it's gonna work. Nope, I gotta get that plastic opening tool and we'll be right back. Okay, the tool I forgot is a plastic pry tool. Now this one, um, I actually have um, broken off the tip of it so it's not that flat or smooth on the tip, which actually works really well for what I'm gonna do here. So once again, we have to push in here and pull out, pull that apart about right there. And then what we're gonna wanna do is this clip has already been disengaged, you can see. So there's another clip about right there Another clip about right there, and another one right over here. And that one's a little harder to get sometimes. So you'll notice that I have my thumb over here pushing, pushing this apart. So what that's doing is that put, that's putting tension on all these clips. So as soon as I get pushed in correctly in the right place, then that just uh, comes apart because it's got tension on it. So once those are free, then here you can just lift up just like that. So you've got the case free. But you gotta be really careful, because in the front here, there's a ribbon cable that you have to disconnect right here. So you don't wanna just tip this all off and pull it off, because you're just gonna pull that ribbon cable right off. So the tricky part here is gonna be showing you how I disconnect that cable. Um, what I normally do is I put it on the edge of a table, about like this, and then you pull up the cable until it's all the way disengaged. Now I'm gonna do this the opposite way I usually do, which could be interesting. So the ribbon cable is right here. So there's a, a part of it that you have to um, remove from the front of it, and then you've got to disengage the clip. And then after that, it'll push back. Okay, so once we have the top case removed, what we're gonna do is remove this cable right here, which is the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna cable. Uh, the Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna is built into this front RF board. Uh, then we're gonna remove the speaker connector, 
right here. And this one is tricky. What you want to do is hold on to the part of the connector that's connected to this board and then pull up this part of the connector. Um, it's very easy to uh, pull this connector all the way off because it's, it's pretty loose on there. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is um, disconnect the um, Wi-Fi Bluetooth module right here. And we're actually gonna take the antenna connector off of here as well, because you can see it's connected to this top case right here and right here. So we're gonna pull that off. So that's off. Now we're gonna take our Torx T8 security and we're gonna pull the screws out of this. And then this, you can just kind of wiggle it and it'll come up. You can see the connectors right there and that connects right there. Once that is up, you'll see there's a hidden screw right there. And that's one of the screws you have to remove to get this top plate off. These screws are Torx T10 security screws. So we're gonna change bits here and then we're gonna pull those off. Oops. So there's uh, eight or so of these all around this top case. So we gotta get all of them taken off. My bit keeps pulling out of my screwdriver here. You can see why we use the electric screwdrivers for these, because when you do um, several of these a day, some days, then it just makes it go that much quicker. Okay, so all these are off, but this isn't just gonna pull straight up. You're gonna have a cable connector down in here that you've gotta get out. So we're gonna pull it up fairly gently, and then you gotta get your fingers in here. You can see there's this cable right here that's got a connector in there we've got to get out first. So we're just going to grab it, wiggle it back and forth as we pull up. And we have now freed this part. So this is the inside of the Xbox. Um, you got your fan and under there is the uh, heat sink. You got your hard drive and then the disk drive. And this is the part we're going to remove. So the first thing we've got to do is take these cables out and then um, after those cables are removed, this actually just pulls up, kind of like this hard drive you see. It's not actually screwed down. Um, it just sits in there. Um, there are locating pins that you have to make sure are there when you put it in there, um, but it does just sit in there. So these cables, they're kind of a pain to get off, but they do come off. You just wiggle them back and forth and they do come right off. So those two, you can see, are fairly easy to disconnect. Now that that's done, we just uh, pull the drive straight up and it just comes right out. And I always take this off. Um, this is just the back support um, for it. So it's just connected by these little clips right here. Um, so we take that off and then we've got our drive here. Um, and that's the part we'll uh, remove the um, laser out of that in just a minute. So the part I wanted to show you right in here, you can see this ribbon cable right here and this this piece right here actually slides over the other side of the connector so when you go to remove this you have to pull this up or else it's not going to be able to pull back um, if you pull this up and then you disengage the connector you can see there's a little tab right here that has to pull out so um, you pull this part of the ribbon cable up and then this pulls out and then you can pull the ribbon cable out. Uh, that's probably the trickiest part on these Xboxes is just removing that one ribbon cable. Once you have that done, then the rest really isn't too hard usually. So we're gonna move the rest of this aside and then we're gonna go ahead and get to replacing the laser. I'm gonna use my PH00 and remove four screws. There's two on the back, and then there's two on the front under this, uh, it's like a metal mesh um, stripe right here, or strip right here. So there's one under that and one under here. 
So once those four screws are out, this will lift up. That'll lift up and then you can see the inside. So this um, is the board for the disk drive. And if, you have, if we end up having to replace this whole entire unit, this board is gonna have to come off and be swapped with a new one, which is not hard. There's um, one screw here, one screw here, and one screw here. And then that board would come out, except for there's also two um, wires right here that would need to be unsoldered. And then we need to unsolder the board from the replacement drive and put this one in the replacement drive. This is married to the motherboard. So you can't just um, swap, swap drives straight over. So you would need to replace this. Now, if you notice, there is a small plastic piece right here. Um, not sure what that's for, but it looks like that may be one of the problems with this drive. So um, given this plastic piece, I don't know for sure whether a laser is going to fix this. So we're going to take a little bit close, closer look inside and see if there's any gears or anything else like that that are causing a problem. So to do that, um, I'm actually going to pull the guts basically of this out. So what you got to do to do that is there's little locating pins right here. We're going to push down on this black plastic piece and then if you push down and out it'll come out there's hooks right here that are hooking it in so but once you get that done then this will go ahead and just slide right out and then you can see the underside of it as well now what i like to do is i just like to take a look at all these inside pieces see if there's any missing pieces or anything's misaligned um, so far from what I can tell this looks fine. One thing I did notice though is that it looks like this uh, laser part just um, moves around by on its own. So what's actually wrong with this one is the gears right there, there's the locating pin that goes on those gears that actually helps move this around is not there. So it looks like replacing this carrier with the laser is gonna fix this one for us. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and do now. We're gonna remove the green drive board and then the ribbon cables, and then we'll be able to remove three screws and pull this whole carrier out. So we do have a part right here, and I'm gonna get it out for you so you can see what the part is we're gonna be repairing, replacing. So that's what we're gonna fix. You can see this laser will not um, just move freely. It moves uh, when the gear, when the worm gear right here moves, that will cause this laser to move. So this little plastic piece right here is the one that looks to be bad in this old drive. So we're gonna set this aside right here and we're gonna get to replacing this one. So we'll take these three screws out good to have some sort of magnet or something so on your screwdriver so it'll stick to them stick to it but I don't have one on mine right now so I'm just gonna grab them and pull them out so those three are out so you can see this uh, green board is movable now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all the ribbon cables off of it and these ones have uh, these black connectors um, with the flap on it, the flap just pulls up. So you pull the flap up and then remove the connector. Now that that's done, the connector, there's a small locating tab right here. So we're gonna pull it up and away from that. And I'm just gonna flip this back because we still do have the two wires that are connected to the motor here. So then the three screws for the, the laser carrier and that one dropped down in there. So I'm gonna just use my screwdrivers, screwdriver and pull that screw out. This other screw, and then we got one more. Now sometimes um, if your disk drive is making a lot of vibration or something like that, um, sometimes these screws right here will come loose and when this drive spins up really fast, that'll just cause it to vibrate. It'll move back and forth really fast. So if you have a bad vibration, sometimes that's fixable just by going in and tightening those screws up. So this is the old laser right here. 
and we will have to place this ribbon cable and this ribbon cable on the new laser. So that's what we're going to do next. Have to disengage this ribbon cable by the connector underneath, and that one will pull out. And this one, you can just pull straight out of there. So now we will place these in the new one. It looks like the new one does have this ribbon cable, so we don't need that part. But we do need to install this ribbon cable onto the connector here. I'm going to switch it around so I can use my right hand to place the cable in there. can be kind of tricky. And I'll try and tip it down so you can see what I'm doing a little bit here. And then we got to flip the connector down, which we didn't get flipped down. Okay, connector's flipped down. This cable is installed correctly. So, what we're, so this is the correct way that it needs to go in there. We're going to place it in here, and it's got to slip under this metal part over here while it goes under here. So it's kind of can be kind of tricky to get it in there. Once it's placed in there, we're going to go ahead and put the screws back in, and then we're going to make sure they're they're good and tight. They don't have to be, you know, you don't have to crank on it with a huge wrench or anything, but you want to make sure they're tight enough. It's not going to vibrate in a funny way. Okay, those are on there. So now. Our drive board, we're just going to flip back over. We got to make sure it's installed inside this little locating tab correctly, which it is now. Got to make sure the ribbon cables are flipped up and it looks like it's in there how it should be. So now I'm going to install the little screws. That one, this one, and one more. Okay, so the screws are there. Now we got to make sure the ribbon cables are in the connectors and seated correctly. So that one is. Now this one needs to go in there. Now I usually use a pair of tweezers for this, but I don't have one right at this moment. Okay, all of the Ribbon cables are in, this ribbon cable, this ribbon cable, and this one are all in there correctly. So now we have to put it back in our housing. One good look at this again, just to make sure everything looks good. So what we're gonna wanna do is just slide it back in the housing. You gotta wiggle it up and down and back and forth a little bit to get it to go in here correctly sometimes, but it, it will go. And then we got to make sure this, this ribbon cable right here likes to stick up sometimes. And so you just got to make sure that that's down there where it should be. And then we just keep going in till it's all the way on there. And these clips are engaged correctly and it looks like they are. So this one looks good. Don't think we've forgotten anything. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. There we go. So now these four screws go back on. And then we're going to call that one fixed, hopefully. So you'll just need to lift up that wire mesh to get these on here correctly and then kind of push it back down. Okay, so I'm going to move these parts out of the way. And then I'm going to get this part of the Xbox back over here. And then we're going to flip it over. And we do have to put this back on. We don't want to forget that. That's what helps it sit in here correctly. Now you can see this is this. Um, plastic or this metal mesh stuff over here has been kind of messed up over there. It's not a big deal. It's just to give it good contact with the rest of the case. I mean, I've even seen them put on without that, that mesh there at all and they all work fine. But since it's there, we're going to make sure it's there correctly. 
we're going to plug it in back in the back. Nothing special about these cables, they're just uh, plug in and unplug, so those are done. Now we're going to go ahead and put this back on. One thing you always got to remember is you got to plug this cable in um, for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth before you start putting screws in because you're going to forget about it if not, or before you even get this case all the way on there. I have forgotten about it multiple times, but I think I've forgotten about it enough that I'm probably not going to do it ever again because it's really annoying having to take the whole thing back apart just because you forgot that one thing. So it looks like that all fit down in there correctly. So now we're going to do speaker connector. Always support this connector when you plug in it back in because it's easy to break off. Just push that connector back on. Okay, we're good. Don't forget to put your one screw down here before you put your uh, Wi-Fi board back. So we're going to screw that down all the way. Now we're going to put the Wi-Fi board back on like that. And then also got to put the antenna cable back on the Wi-Fi board itself. And this one you just line up and then you just push down with your fingers until it's on there. And then we got to put all of these screws back in. One of the tricks to remember with these is they're all numbered with a number and a letter. So this one says C8, this one says C1, this one says C2, and C4 over here. There are several other holes on here they have a P next to them. So if they have a P next to them, nothing goes in there. So we're going to take this and screw these all back down how they need to be. Okay, we got all of them screwed down correctly. Now we're going to change bits back to the T8 security torques. And we're going to put the two screws in the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth board. Like that. Okay, now the next tricky part is getting this front case back on correctly and getting the ribbon cable back in here. So I can't think of any good way to get a good camera angle on this, but I can show you how I do it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it so the front lip is overhanging my workbench here. I'm gonna move my chair out of the way. So then what I do is I grab my case and I kind of lower the front over the top. I'm gonna turn it here so you can see what I'm doing. So the front is going to be lowered over the top, and that gives me room to work underneath here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down kind of on my knees, and I'm going to take that ribbon cable out from underneath it. I hope you can see that. And I'm going to push that ribbon cable into the connector. And I just keep pushing until the connector is locked in place. And then that front part of the ribbon cable will go around the back side of the connector. So once that's done, then you got to line up the tabs. I'm going to show you from the side. So the tabs are lined up here. Now, the one thing you got to remember is there's this piece right here. Right here, and there's a tab right here that has to go over that piece. That's going to be the trick to getting this on. So what I do is I lift like this, and I watch and make sure that I get that all the way on there. And it's a hard thing to do sometimes but it's snapped on now. And now the back, you can see it's all um, up just a little bit. What I normally do is I actually test them just like this. I'll put a screwdriver or something in here so it doesn't push all the way down on it. Because if you um, get this done and then find that, that, that the problem you um, tried to fix wasn't actually fixed, then you have to do this all again. Um, I'm pretty confident that this is the fix though, so I'm going to go ahead and push down. You can hear all those clips clip back into place. Then we've got to slide this piece back on right here. Just make sure it's lined up in the grooves. And just slide it on all the way. And then this piece just snaps on. 
and we're done. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this connected to our TV. We're going to put a game disc in and see if it reads. Okay, here we are with the Xbox One that we just fixed. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the disc in, see what, that, see what it does. And hopefully, if we're lucky, it's going to read it. Let's see what it does here. Okay, it looks like it is installing. So we'll just wait here just for another uh, couple seconds and make sure that it's going to install all the way, or mostly all the way, enough to make sure that it's working. Okay, it looks like it's given us an update uh, message, so we're going to update later. It looks like it is working though, so this disk drive is now reading, so it looks like we fixed this one. And it uh, looks like now I just got to test it the rest of the day. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and we'll answer um, as soon as we can. Thanks for watching.